Hello everybody. I have cleaned out the entire corner of the greenhouse and I'm trying to figure out the best way to go. Now there is my Sears Roebuck, my antique Sears pot bellied, uh, pot bellied water boiler stove. That's the one I used in the old camper when I first started the off-grid project. When I lost my job, lost my apartment, moved into the camper in a blizzard. That's the wood stove I used and I had the water boiler heating water and running into a car heater core to heat my old uh, camper. So, oh, there's the mean little crow monster in the corner. Look at the little guy. He's a pretty cute little guy, but uh, he's gonna die. He's well fed, and he is not afraid of me. Not at all. But I uh, am not giving him any bad vibes because he's already eaten some poison. He's got three days left. Um, anyway, so my old camper I was in the old camper and uh, that was my wood stove, my, my heater. And I had a water pump. I bought a solar water pump off eBay and uh, it was for hot water and it was a low current. And I had the one inch pipes reduced to a half inch PEX uh, designed for hot water flow. And uh, that never got hotter. The water jacket on this never got hotter than boiling water. So the PEX pipes, which were designed for carrying hot water, were fine. And it pumped into the back half of my uh, camper. And I had two computer fans on a car heater core blowing heat out. It really worked, but I had a lot of problems and a lot of uh, blowouts and failures. And a lot of you know the story. If you don't, um, if I remember, I'll try to put the link up to when I moved out into the camper. A little bit of uh, memories of old times there. Anyway, that's the same old stove, and I'm going to attempt to set it up today with a stove outdoors because otherwise I'd have to put holes in the walls here, or in the ceiling or in the walls, one of the two. And in that I'm going to have to have um, all kinds of fixtures and fittings for that. And because that is a water boiler, I need to have it holding water and flowing water because um, I hate to see what happens if I don't. I don't want to burn it without water because that's what it was designed to do. So I've got some fittings, plumbing fittings, uh, one inch <coughs> pipe fittings and I've got some one inch PVC which will fit right on there and I have this 55 gallon drum which I'm trying to figure out how to put plumbing on so that I can run the water, hot water from the wood stove into the drum. So my idea is to have the top pipe going upward at an angle and then come in and come into a 90 degree turn and drop into the water tank, into the top uh, hole. So it'll just drop into the top. And at the bottom, I plan on taking a uh, pipe fitting, the screw on flange fitting, and then the PEX uh, PVC, PVC screws into there, and then the PVC pipe will go into here and a 90 degree turn and then out back out to the wood stove with the PVC pipe. So that's all theoretical and hopeful. I really hope I can make this work. Um, I don't know. I wish I had taken one of these in with me to the plumbing store, the hardware store today. It'd be cool if I could just take and uh, and have one of these hooked up. But I also don't have these uh, plugs. I don't have any of these, I don't think. I'm going to look around, but I don't think I have any of these. So uh, one idea would have been to turn this upside down or even run it sideways. If I could get both of these fittings, then I don't have to do any rigging up of any kind at all. So I may consider just going in and try to find some of these real quick. I'll end up working at well after dark if that's the case. Um, if it comes to that. But if I can figure out what size this is and get an adapter for that, maybe I can have the hot water, which is thinner and lighter, go into here. The cold water, which is thicker and denser, comes back into here. And I can have one of the drums immediately hooked up in here with no problem. And then, uh, of course, it'll be laying on its side then, but that's better than nothing. And that'll help. Uh, 55 gallons of water in here will greatly help. So the other option is to do it up and up and down in an up and down fashion and have the plumbing fastened through with a lot of JB weld, uh, instant metal or whatever you want to call it, to have it uh, have this fastened and cu uh, cut a hole through the pipe, through the uh, bottom of the tank, 
have this fastened on it, screw this in, and have the plumbing come out. So, anyway, I'm trying to figure out what I can do with what I've got. So, I'm going to give it some thought and uh, maneuvering things here, and I'll get back to you when I know what I'm doing here. Well, I've got new good news, people. I have uh, some pipe fittings, and I keep all my fittings in this bag. And I have found out from research online and also from um, checking out here, this is a two inch, a standard two inch female pipe thread, and this is a standard three quarter inch pipe thread. Standard, very standard. So I am going to go to the hardware store and I'm not going to modify these at all. I'm simply going to have hot water going in and cold water flowing out. So I have to get reducers to go from the one inch PVC, which I'm just going to use because uh, I have it already. Uh, one inch PVC reduced to here and then I'll have a reducer from two inch to the uh, from the two inch pipe to the one inch PVC and then I'm going to go from there on into the next barrel one on top of the other and then the uh, the cold water coming out so this is going to work out this is going to be really amazing guys I do believe this is going to work well so uh, I want to go back to the hardware store and get some plumbing and then all I really have to do is stack these up, brace them from falling, and set up the fittings. No more glue, no worrying about holes that don't belong and don't work. I'm going to use the originals. This is good. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. So I'm back, but I'm running out of daylight, and I'm running out of time. Um, it's going to be dark soon, and it's really, really cold. It's supposed to hit 17 degrees tonight, and I am not going to finish this today. Uh, it's just too much work, and I am running out of Teflon tape. I'm, I, I have some somewhere, but I'm just going to have to find it. And the tools and everything, but it's plug and play. The I've got three adapters to get to the uh, drum here. I've got one adapter goes in here to a T. Now the T's purpose is going to be for... Um, a filler neck on top so I'm going to have a filler neck and also pressure release so that's that purpose and then I'll, I'll, I'll come off um, I'm not sure how exactly if I come up with a 90 degree to a filler neck and a 90 degree out to the wood stove because this barrel will be laying on its side facing that way so the plumbing will be facing out to the wood stove and then I got um, fittings for the wood stove so that'll fit on. Actually, this piece I won't need because I have a nipple there. So I'll have to just take that nipple off. Uh, no, sorry, take off the um, threaded piece that reduced to a half inch PEX. Put this piece in and uh, I'm good to go. So this I won't need. And then I'm out to the PVC. So all that is there. Um, I got PVC cement, but I'm running out of Teflon and I had to find this massive wrench. So, I'm going to put what I can together for now, and then the one will go into the other, so I've got the same things here. So the one will branch off and go into the other. I think I still have, yeah, I've got two 90 degree elbows to branch that off and go into here. And then that'll go into that big hole, and then the little hole will come back out with the uh, other T-fitting. And um, that'll give me expansion room to go out to a future... Uh, another future water tank um, set of water tanks on the side so I want to be able to have expansion room for adding water tanks on the side so that's the idea there anyway I have some work to do so I'm not going to bore you with the all the fine details I'm going to put Teflon tape on here, screw it in as tight as I can, then the next, and then the next, and then look for some more Teflon tape and carry on. I found some more uh, Teflon tape, so I've got these three in and tight, as tight as I can safely get them without causing harm to something. I was really wrenching on the barrel itself. Um, that one I have to clean because that's going to be glued on the exterior of this one, so I've got to clean that. So I want to go ahead and set up this barrel as well next with the uh, large fitting and then I'm probably going to end up calling it a night because uh, there's 
I don't know, putting holes through the wall and everything else, working outside. I really prefer to do that in the daylight. And I don't want to take that stove outside unless I know that I'm going to be ready to use it out there at that time. I am going to put the end pieces on that though, Teflon tape that. i got to take all the brass fittings from there and put in the uh, fittings I purchased on there. And that'll be ready for uh, PVC pipe. I'll do that yet tonight. So, I'm going to knock this piece out here, this uh, fitting, and then put all the adapters in. And uh, see how we go from there. Well, guys, I got to call it a night now. Anyway, I have a problem. Uh, I was looking inside these drums, and well, when I was rolling it over to roll it into place and see how it's going to fit in here. Uh, obviously it's going to lay down this way, the plumbing going through the wall. Um, I heard some noise inside, and I looked, and it's full of chunks of rust. Um, really not cool at all. Let me see if I can show you. If I can get the camera to, uh, there you go. Big, massive chunks of rust. I'm going to have to bang off the walls of the barrel, and, uh, and uh, get that cleaned out. So I'm going to take the big fitting back off, all that work putting it on, I've got to take it back off, um, clean that barrel out before I try to put it into use. Now, this is not going to be a simple overnight project. I did not think it was that bad inside. Um, anyway, so, and then the other barrel over here, I can't get the fitting off. I can't get it open at all, no matter what. I've been beating on it, pounding on it, prying on it. I can't get that off. And that barrel's got a warped bottom anyway, so I'm sure it's going to be, I can see rust inside. Uh, it's going to be just as bad as the others. So I'm going to have to go look for clean barrels. I've got a couple other barrels. I'm going to have to find barrels that are clean inside. Or at least clean them out and knock off the rust before I put them into use. And then I thought about, since this is all... Um, water. Um, I'm going to use a, I'm thinking about using a household water filter, a whole house water filter in line to take out any rust and junk um, in the system as it works. Because this old stove will certainly have some junk in it too. And then of course I'm going to use some antifreeze as well in there. Um, thinking about going to a car shop and see if I can get some free antifreeze. 50-50 um, mix used. Anyway, I guess that's it, guys, for tonight. I, um... What do we got here? 37 degrees. Uh, I, I raised the thermometer up to here to show me what the temperature is. It's 37. I, wanna, I got a little propane heater out here for now. A um, little Mr. Heater buddy. I'm going to put that in high. And, uh, hope for the best tonight. At least there's no wind. So... That's all right. It's better that there's no wind. All right, I'll take you over into the water and woodshed where I'm faring much, much better than I am here in the greenhouse. So let's go on out there. So in here, although I'm burning a lot of wood, um, it's very warm and toasty in here right now. Um, we've got an inside temperature of 66.2 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. 66.2 degrees and 13 in the freezer. Um, just for safety though, I'm going to drain the water heater tonight. Actually, I'm going to uh, pull the plug right now, shut off the valve. I'm going to do that now while I'm thinking of it. Just to be safe tonight. And then uh, there's a drain plug out. And then um, I want to open up the shower and let the water back wash through to let the pressure out. Now the stove is doing all right, but we're burning some wood. Unfortunately, it's burning quite a bit of wood. I just filled it in. I'm putting logs in there. It's burning, but it's burning a little faster than I'd like. Now, I probably want to get a good bed of coals in there in the bottom. It'll be better off, but anyway, um, that's heating up the woodshed nicely, and it's a very gentle burn. It's very, very comfortable. I'm hoping that I'll heat the water tanks enough tonight that um, 39 degrees, it's not good, 41 degrees, 
I'm hoping oh, that's 38. Every time I hit it, I get a different reading. I'm hoping to warm up the water tanks enough to make a difference in here. But I still got a lot of work to do before the, the deep freeze. Hey, everybody. Got the uh, quad running. Guess I can shut off the truck. <sighs> are trying to make sure that we don't that, that block doesn't get hurt so we um, drain the radiator and uh, put in more antifreeze and we're running it till it warms up and gets that mix into the block to make sure that uh, the engine doesn't get harmed so I'm just running it for a while I'm just going to run it for a while. It looks like there's steam coming off of it, so it's warming up. But I just want to make extra, extra sure that we get that antifreeze throughout the whole engine. And uh, don't cause any harm to this machine overnight. It sure runs nice. Even though it's got a blown head gas, it's still running nice. And then once it pressurizes, we'll see where that antifreeze leaks. Once it dries off and starts pressurizing, hopefully I'll see where it was leaking. If it was leaking. I think it was. But when I last checked it, it wasn't on a fluid, so I don't know what was running out of there. It could have been water from somewhere, but anyway, I want to run it a little bit and see what we can see. And like I said, get that antifreeze into that block. Make sure it wasn't just water in there. Because I don't want to lose this thing. And again, for all I know, that could have been just water all over the radiator too the other day. Um, dripping all over. Now that we got it open and have it pressurized, we're going to see what's what here. It could be the radiator isn't leaking, but we'll find out now. I don't see anything dripping. Anyway, we're out here working. Chris just went in to warm up. I'm still out here in the cold. It's cold. It's really cold. But this has got to be done. Well, I just shut it off. Um, it's certainly steaming. Of course, you can't see the steam from that over the steam of my breath. It's steaming. Um, it's definitely hot. So it warmed up. Actually, it feels good. Oh, yeah. I am so cold. I took my gloves off so I could work on the uh, engine and stuff, but uh, I just put my gloves in away, I should say. But anyway, my hands were frozen inside my gloves. Um, that's hot, so we definitely got antifreeze into the engine, and uh, should be able to rest in peace tonight, knowing that it's safe. Um, I do see, looks like something going on right here, so we might have something up in the top end, end here. I'm going to have to let that dry off and come out again another time to see um, for sure where we're leaking. Because right now I got everything wet because I was messing around with it. I got to let the whole engine dry off and then come back to it. But at least I know it's not going to break the block tonight. That's important. Well, I'm going to go check the uh, shed and um, reload the stove in there and then call it a night. Um, it's 71 degrees in here, 72 and rising, so I'm going to keep that stove going. I have a constant problem with this here. It keeps wanting to rub on me, so I definitely have to work on that fan. That's giving me issues. But, boy, it's cozy in here. But we'll uh, keep that wood stove going as long as I can. 37 degrees. I don't know. I'm not getting proper readings on the water. 41, 38. See, I'm not getting proper readings. It always changes every time I check it. 42, 
38 degrees. It's not very good. The water is cold. Not good at all. So, we'll keep that running. Keep the stove going. <laughs> 